Okay, we're back again. This is Year 5 Clarinets, and we're going to use our Music Graph. Now, if you don't know what page that is, you've got a page that's headed Music Graph. I've put some extra markings onto mine. I put O for open, T-O for thumb only, T1, T2, T3. Can you guess what the rest of that means? And there's our one, two, three, four, five steps of our tune. So stop the video for a minute and see if you can make those make markings on yours matching it. So we've got O for open, T, O, thumb only, T, one, thumb and one, T, two, thumb and two, T, three, thumb and three. And I've put one, two, three, four, five across the bottom there. Okay. Now I'm going to assume you just stopped the video when any, any, whenever you needed to and you've got all of that marked now. Okay, because we're going to make a little tune, a five note tune, starting on thumb and one, just like we did then. And then we're going to write it onto that graph. So here we go, starting thumb and one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that one more time so you really get it in your head what it is we're doing. I'll play it, you follow. Okay, so the first thing we did, we started with thumb and one, and that's what we did for our first step. So I'm going to mark a cross on the graph where thumb and one was and above the first step. Okay, our second step, we took one step down to thumb and we went to thumb and two. So I'm going to put a cross over beside thumb and two but above step two. See, our second step's a step lower. Now I'm going to step three. For step three, I went to thumb and three. So I'm going to put it at the level of thumb and three but above step three. Here we go. You can, if you want to make your graph look exactly like mine, stop and start the video when you need to. See what's going on there? Now, my next step, I took a step up again. I went back to thumb and two. That's my fourth step, is, it, is with thumb and two. So now my graph looks like that. And you can make your graph look like that. And then my fifth step, final step, was back at thumb and one. So I'm going to put a cross that's level with thumb and one and above the fifth step. And now my graph looks like that. Okay. Now, if I were to translate that into... No, I'll do that in a minute. Okay, let's do this again. Here's one I prepared earlier. Well, let's see what happens if we do a thumb and one and use the notes up here with a thumb only and open note. So I'm going to do a little five note tune and I'm going to make it into a graph. Here we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to play it again and then see if you can follow what I did. Okay, so this is what my graph looks like now. I started with thumb and one on step one. And then I'm going to do thumb only up here but above step two. Okay, see my graph went a step up. Now I came, came back a step because I went back to thumb and one. So I'm going to put thumb and one again above step three. And then I went thumb only again above step four. And my graph now looks like that. If you want to make your graph look the same, you could maybe use a different colour or something a different pen. 
And then here's my last one. I went to my open note for step five. Have a look. There's my open note. Okay, now, music notation isn't wasn't designed for clarinets. It's about a thousand years old, actually, music notation. Pretty cool stuff, yeah? So some of the things about music notation work really well for clarinet and some things not so well. Here's one of the things that works well. I'm going to put the... Now, I'm going to... Because what I'm going to tell you is music notation is really a kind of graph. So I'm going to put my thumb in one note. I'm going to put a dot for that on the bottom one line of the stave lines. Why the bottom line of the stave lines? History. Okay. So there's my first music dot. Now, I went down a step to thumb and two, so I'm going to put the next dot a step lower. Now, I've run out of stave lines. Look, I've dangled that from below the lowest stave line there is. This is a part where it doesn't work so well for us. We need another stave line, but I'm not going to draw a whole stave line. I'm going to draw a little part of a stave line, and then I'm going to put my third dot on that. There we go. Now, then my tune came up a step and then up a step again. So here's my five music dots showing our five steps. Notice that the shape of the graph is a lot like the shape of the music, music and that's because music is a graph. But it's flattened down a bit because our stave lines are a lot closer together. We didn't have any vertical lines at all. Now, you, on a graph, on graph paper, you often do have vertical lines and horizontal lines, giving you a, a grid. But what we did have is after we'd counted four, our fifth one went past that bar line. So we put the first four dots in the first bar, and then we put the fifth dot in the next bar. And way, a way we often write that in music notation to show you to expect four is we write four, four. I'll tell you why the bottom one, but the top one says a four. All right, supposing we wanted to write our other tune into, from off a graph and into the stave lines. I'm going to do it really fast because I don't want the videos to get too long. I'll neaten that up a bit. So the joy of doing this in pencil, by the way, folks, if you decide that some, something you've done is a bit wrong and hasn't quite worked, rub it out and do it again. Alrighty, so that's your other stave, your music. See, have a look. The dots are still following the same pattern as, as our graph did, but it's a little bit flattened out. Now, that's for that to make sense for you for clarinet, the other thing you need is a fingering chart. I'm beginning to see why this toy takes a long time in lessons. This is nearly coming up to eight minutes now. So you need a fingering chart. So now you have to take the next page that says... The all new Make It Yourself Clarinet Fingering Chart for Year 5 and 6. And you need to know this. Our thumb and one note is called E. So notice I wrote that on my graph there. Okay, you could you can also go back and write in G, F, E, D, and C down the sides of your graph if you want to. I'm going to show you where how to, the fingering for E was thumb and one, and this is how I drew it on my onto my do-it-yourself fingering chart. I coloured in that one to show you that's the thumb covering the thumb hole, and I've coloured in that one to show you the finger is covering the first finger hole. But you know, on our round clarinet, the thumb was actually round the back. The thing is, we've got a flat piece of paper. So if we're trying to show a round instrument on a flat piece of paper, the thumb has to sit beside the first finger because we haven't got a round the back on a piece of paper, yeah? Okay, so our thumb and one. Our thumb and two was the note that dangled from the line, from that bottom line. My colleague calls it dangly D. Dangly D is sitting there. See that? We've covered the thumb hole in two finger holes, and look, it's dangling from the line. The line, the note where we had to draw ourselves an extra short line is thumb and three. So I'm going to fill it in like that onto the chart. And you can fill it in on your chart. All right. 
thumb only is our F. If you're wondering what an F sharp is, it's one we haven't done yet, except when you were experimenting and finding exciting things, because it's the note you get if you cover the first finger hole, but don't cover the thumb. And then our last one is open G, and it's called open G because no holes are covered at all when we do open G. Okay, so that is the lesson about how to use your music graph. You can use your music graph, and now you can use it to translate things into music notation. Now, that doesn't mean that we're just going to do music notation from now on. We're still going to make up lots and lots of tunes. We're still going to learn things by ear. But we've made a start on learning how to read and write music notation. That's called music literacy. Step one for you. Well done.